Hello ladies, gents, and everyones. It is Thursday, April 22nd, and we're here to talk about this week's space and astronomy news. SpaceX's Crew-2 mission was supposed to launch this morning at 6.11 a.m., but yesterday they announced that it was going to be delayed due to unfavorable weather conditions at the launch site in Florida. And so the new time now is tomorrow, Friday, April 23rd at 5.49 a.m. Eastern. This mission will be taking four astronauts from three different space agencies to the International Space Station. NASA announced a really big space contract this week, and that is for the future moon landing for the Artemis missions. And this contract went to SpaceX. Now this contract is valued at about $2.89 billion. <laughs> So it's a pretty big deal. The launch from Earth is going to be done by NASA's own SLS for the Artemis missions. So this contract is actually for the lander that is actually going to take the astronauts down to the surface of the moon once they arrive. This will be the HLS Starship or human landing ship. And this money being pumped into Starship is good news for SpaceX and their hopes for having Starship become a future Mars rocket. Speaking of Mars, super exciting news coming from the Red Planet with the very first attempt at powered flight on another planet this past week. And that was on Monday and you guys, it was successful. <laughs> I just think this is so cool. So on Monday, the little helicopter Ingenuity took off from the ground, ascended to about 10 feet, hovered for 30 seconds and then landed again. The total flight time was about 39 seconds. Now, because of the light time delay between us and Mars, this flight was pretty much completely autonomous. And so JPL was just waiting for confirmation that it was successful, which they received on early Monday morning. Ingenuity has its own cameras on board and the rover Perseverance was nearby and able to take a video of us for this historic flight, which I think is just super cool. Now this is a technology demonstration. So Ingenuity is intended to see if this is possible because there is a lot of challenges that go into making a helicopter fly on another planet with about 1% the atmosphere. <laughs> like it's hard, <laughs> but they did it and they did it not just once, but they've already done the second flight of Ingenuity that actually happened just this morning. This second flight went to a slightly higher altitude. So Ingenuity went up to 16 feet and it had a longer hover and it also traveled laterally or sideways about seven feet. Um, they've released this image from the black and white navigation camera on Ingenuity with more images to come because this was just happening this morning. It just got this data back at about 9.30 a.m. But Percy couldn't let Ingenuity have all the fun and Perseverance also made some history this week, which it's just so cool to be living in the times when we can do these sorts of things. So what Perseverance did is for the very first time extract oxygen from the atmosphere of Mars. There's an instrument on board Perseverance called MOXIE, the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment. <laughs> This basically works by taking the carbon dioxide from the uh, Martian atmosphere and getting it really hot and breaking it apart into carbon and oxygen and then combining it to make O2, oxygen gas, and then a byproduct is CO, carbon monoxide, which was released back to the atmosphere. In this case, MOXIE made about five grams of oxygen, <laughs> which isn't a lot, but this is the first time it's been done. And MOXIE is in fact just a technology demonstration. So it's there to prove that this can be done and lay the groundwork for future missions that could actually make use of this oxygen for breathing for the astronauts, as well as actually rocket fuel, which needs that oxygen. So congratulations to NASA, JPL, Perseverance, Ingenuity, and everybody involved in these really historic um, experiments happening on the surface of Mars. Russia announced this week that they are going to be leaving the International Partnership for the International Space Station. So Russia has been a partner on the ISS since 1998, but that partnership is going to end in 2025. Now the original lifetime of the ISS was only 15 years, so we're already well beyond that. But now it's planned to operate through at least 2028 and perhaps beyond. But after 2025, without the Russians. Roscosmos also announced that they are planning to launch their own national space station in 2030, pending approval from Vladimir Putin. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you will join us again next week. Have a good one. Bye.